Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of What's on My Desk, or should I rather say another Q&A Tuesday or a collab. Guys, call it what you want, but a lot of you guys have asked me questions about this new brand called Aventi Watches, right? These hypercar-inspired crystal tourbillons, which you can pick up at five to ten thousand dollars lo and behold i have two of these on my desk how did that happen well after you guys asked me a bunch of times what these are i sent an email to aventi watches and a gentleman by the name of ryan responded to my email saying oh my god roman i actually watch your youtube videos you're pretty cool i'd be happy to send you these watches and talk to you about them now before all you guys get your panties in a bunch in regards to sponsored content and all that other stuff uh, quick disclaimer, I do not get paid for doing this. I simply did this because you guys asked and the guys at Aventi were nice enough to send these over so that I can actually review them. And on top of that, I have the guys here to my left in my laptop on a Zoom call, which is uh, pretty awesome considering the fact that one of them is in Australia, which makes it about 11 o'clock at night, and the other one is in San Diego, which makes it about 6 o'clock in the morning. Of course, I set the appointment to my convenience. Sorry about that, guys. One is falling asleep because it's late. The other one is uh, falling asleep because it's way too early, but they both have a cup of coffee, so hopefully this will make for a good collab. So, uh, lo and behold, I have Hanu and Ryan. What's up, guys? Yeah. Cheers, Roman. Good to see you. <laughs> and great work on the timing, mate. Cheers. <laughs> we have to find a happy medium somewhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. What I wanted to do here, and again, the whole purpose of this was, is for me to physically handle these watches, which I did prior, obviously, to our call. I actually wore both of them for a couple of days, and everybody was asking, what is this, what is this, what is this? And of course, I went on with the whole idea of what these watches are about, how they were inspired, but I felt that it's better to let you guys talk a little bit about what inspired you to get this started, what inspired the creation of the swatches, and how the hell do you come up with a crystal trivia that cost $10,000? Aventi was, was kind of a, a project that I thought of a, a, a long time ago. I wanted to create a unique shaped watch um, that specifically was a sapphire watch. Only recently I, I started to really push on it and I, I saw an opportunity because we built a lot of relationships with the other brands that we, that we have um, with a lot of factories all around the world. Actually, funny story, Ryan and I actually flew over to Switzerland specifically. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that, that's, you know, there's many, many layers to that story <laughs> with helicopters and hospitals and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> sounds like so, sounds like you guys should have made a vlog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should have. yeah, we definitely should have. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have said very much, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we we started there, and what what we got, we just hit a lot of brick walls. So, um, the dream of making a like a Swiss luxury a high end you know, sapphire timepiece was just thrown out the window. Uh, but then I started to get more creative, asking around uh, different different companies, different factories, finding different partners, and then we kind of put something amazing together and the whole business model as well as the products themselves is built around being very effective and rethinking solutions to, to typical problems where a typical uh, manufacturer would want um, or even a brand would want a certain percentage of markup and return where uh, we don't need that because I mean Ryan's remote, I'm remote, uh, we don't have any showrooms, There's, the whole business model is completely different. So that's why we're able to really challenge a lot of these markup numbers that these traditional brands have. It sounds to me that what you ended up doing is trimming out the fat. You don't have a fancy office. You don't have a fa fancy manufacturing plant. You don't have boutiques everywhere. Just to set up an authorized dealer for your watches specifically, uh, you're talking about showcases. You're talking about display. You're talking about additional marketing dollars. You're talking about a lot of fat, as we call it, that all gets factored into the price of the watch, into the retail price of the watch. Let's just call it that. The other component is not necessarily just the business operational cost. It, we're, we're looking at the client acquisition cost. So typically when you look at a business, you look at what does it cost to acquire a client? What's the lifetime value of the client? How much money do we have to spend on that to, to receive that, to get it? And what we've done is we've utilized people like yourself and we've reached out to a lot of people with a, with a great product, which people actually want to share. A lot of people are coming to us. And it's funny because a lot of people don't believe us. They think we're paying for all of these ads. It's, it's ridiculous, uh, you know. I heard the same thing. Yeah, and I'm sitting there and all the YouTube comments going, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, well, that's what, if you, not, if you notice my disclaimer right away, said so it's like, look, guys, I'm not getting paid for this. I actually like the product. I asked them to send it to me and I'm excited to talk about it. It's not until you get the watch physically in hand and see the real watch that you realize, okay, this is pretty cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
So well, talk to me about cars. Yeah. Talk to me the, where did inspiration come from in regards to cars and these watches? I, I, I really love uh, supercars and I think that was the, the main inspiration for this. Like if you notice the Aventi um, A11, what you're holding there is th there's not any curves on the actual, you know, on, on any part of the, the Sapphire. There, there's no curved, uh, you know, there's no curves. And that, that was a funny thing. I was talking with some Swiss designers and they, they were saying, and we're, we're actually designing some new movements. And, and I said to him, I said, look, no curves. Our brand is, is all about sharp edges, lines, uh, facets, all of that. What he said, he said, but you know, curves indicate that it's Swiss made movement. And, and, you know, I got into a discussion with him saying, no, we're, 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 we're not doing that. And so, I mean, the lines and the, the angles and the sharp edges, that, that's, that's kind of the inspiration from the automotive um, field. Um, I love yeah, all, all cars, all supercars, particularly Lamborghinis. And, um, you know, that's definitely where some of the inspiration came from. It's an oddball shape, you know. And when I first got the watch, I was like, well, uh, I don't know how this is going to sit on the wrist. That was my first question. But when I did put it on my wrist, I realized that, oddly enough, I felt the watch set on my wrist quite fine. Again, I have a small wrist, but yet the odd shape and the big size, it is a big watch, still tends to sit fine. And I think it's due to the fact how the strap is designed. You're showcasing the watch where the strap virtually disappears. If, and all you see I mean, is the watch. We call it a statement piece. And you're not driving a Lotus if you you know if you've got a lamborghini just you can't compare them and that that was the whole point like we're not we're not um creating this brand for people who are low-key patek or vacheron or, or all of these you know <laughs> all of these brands like not at all but but maybe on the weekend they want to get a bit wild for sure you know <laughs> get the event yeah i always tell my viewers i'm like look if any of you guys are out there buying a you know, a, a jeweled out uh, Rolex or, or, or uh, a Richard Meal that may be red in color, right? Or, or even uh, a watch that's flashy. And the looks that you get, you don't enjoy me. You're lying to yourself and you're lying to me because look, at the end of the day, the show off factor is there. Uh, having a fancy car, you go out on the track with your Porsche or your, or your Lambo or your Ferrari, and like, oh my God, this thing holds the curve so well. I can make 90 degree turns. Uh, you know, going 100 miles an hour. Man, this baby must corner like it's on rails. But at the end of the day, you pull up to a club or you pull up to a restaurant or wherever you are, and the 50,000 looks that you get in your car is still satisfactory to the owner. And oddly enough, to that, this is what I did. So I put both of them on when I got them. You know, I walked into my sales department. I have four people sitting in my sales department, and everyone was like, what the hell is that? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Which means that it achieved exactly what you just said. It does catch attention. Let's talk about what everybody else says. Oh my God, these are cheap Chinese made movements. You guys deal with an ISO 9000 company out in Asia. Explain to me a little bit what that means because the viewers may think, oh, it's made in China and it's all the same. It's not, I know it's not because yeah. I know I have experience with that. It's a test of management standards that they have to pass, the, the company has to pass. So it's actually accredited. So this is a global standard. This isn't just in Asia or China or Hong Kong. This is a global standard. I mean, there are, there are factories in the US that are, you know, ISO 9000 standard. Um, that, that's part of why, you know, what we're doing is, is, is really legit and, 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 and honestly very high quality for, for what, you know, for the, for the price, for the value. Um, the other point is the fact that the, our partners that we work with have many years of experience. Like, this isn't just some random factory that have quickly put together. Um, and uh, it's the, the funniest thing. Uh, I have a lot of conversations on these uh, <laughs> um, YouTube comments because there there's a lot of people that are very well misinformed and, and don't put research, or put, don't put effort into learning or researching. And then I, I, I bring them uh, facts and evidence to support you know, our stance. For example, um, the, the price of labor is actually cheaper in some other Asian countries, like perhaps Cambodia or Vietnam. The simple fact is that there needs to be a whole ecosystem to produce watches. There's one factory that will do cases, one that will do hands, one that will do the plating, and it works in, in conjunction with each other. You can't do that just by relying on, on cheap labor. You can't just go to the next cheap place because it takes time to train people. Our partners have over 30 years uh, experience mass producing quality uh, quality watches uh, and we've got th you know other partners which check um, and regulate the pieces and the movements as well so we're, we're adding layers and layers and components as we go and continue to improve things um, so uh, we we get everything FDS tested 
So SGS is, is the highest grade of testing to verify the quality. And so we've had our um, sapphire tested, we've had all our rubber tested, everything gets tested on top of what we're told by our partners. So we virtually triple check everything ourselves. A lot of people have the misconception that today, you know, you get a Swiss made watch, it's, you know, the old, the old guy in a white jacket with gloves on with a loop in his eye, putting that entire watch together piece by piece, where in reality, majority of Swiss manufacturers done exactly the same way. You have cases made, you have movements made, you have turbines made separately. This famous in-house movement stuff, not all that stuff is made in-house either. And that's, you know, it has to be a certain part of that movement that has to be made in-house. I happen to bring a Hublot crystal for comparison and right to compare it to your crystal. We'll do that in a little bit. If this thing breaks, and I've had these break, again, it's a hiccup. It happens. This thing breaks, oh, f it's a cheap Chinese watch, and this is why it broke. You know what I mean? Even though the reality of it is that the chances of, you know, something coming out that's eventually going to break, because these are all still handmade, you know, they're pretty much the same, whether it's a Chinese-made movement, and or whether it's a Swiss-made movement, or a German-made movement. That's the thing, and, and a lot of Swiss-made watches are actually... Uh, partially made in in Asia and I've found suppliers in Malaysia that are producing very high quality hands and dials gem setting is done in in other Asian countries even for Swiss brands you it sounds like you went down the rabbit hole right uh, and oh, you yeah. you and the more you go down that rabbit hole the more you the more you find out and we're getting noticed to the point where we're getting blocked from uh, certain partners or even certain yeah. <laughs> um, reviewers because they only work with the Swiss and the Swiss pay the bills. This is literally oh, what we just told. I won't Too close to home. Names. Too yeah. close to home as well. Yeah, they, I, I won't mention names, but they're blocking oh, us. They're they saying, do. oh, no, our, <laughs> our Swiss client who has a Sapphire watch won't like it. Um, you'll yeah. piss them off. I'm very familiar with that concept just the same. But this conversation is really about you guys, and it's about your watches. Yeah. So here's my take on this. In regards to it being noticeable, flashy, you guys have achieved it. You are going to have to, at some point, still come out, I feel like, with a slightly smaller version. Because there's going to be guys out there that are just not going to be able to handle a watch this big. And at the same token, girls, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's very common that the line between uh, men and women in regards to wearing watches is almost disappeared. My wife, for example, whenever I come in wearing a watch, she's like, you know what, I'm going to wear that today. So, but for an average lady, this would be overly huge, right? Which is okay. The trend is to wear huge, but I think at some point you're going to have to come out with a smaller size. I'm going to take this Hublot for comparison so my viewers can simply see. As I put the two side by side, there's zero difference that I see, for example, right? And I know there's levels to these crystals in terms of uh, their density and things of that nature, but at the end of the day, the consumer doesn't give a shit what the density is of the watch. They give a shit what it looks like, right? What I do love about this one, in particular, the white one, is that it's all white. I don't like the second edition Hublot because of the black dial. What they try to achieve here, and I understand, they try to make it to where the movement sort of suspends in midair and it's just, you kind of look at just at the movement, everything else is clear. But I did prefer the original version of that watch. In fact, I wore it for a while. And this is sort of what I got with your white crystal version. And that is the fact that it's an all white watch, basically, right? We are getting a lot of customers actually asking for the black movement. So that's funnily enough. Yeah. In the future versions, what I would love to even see further, some sort of an enamel or some sort of a decoration where the movement is not the silver metal color, but it's actually white, white, where the entire watch becomes white. Let's talk about the strap for a second. And I know this is not, again, the strap that's on the watch now because this is a prototype. One of the biggest issues that I've had with the other Hublot uh, and one of the issues you guys are going to have is the fact that the way this uh, clear rubber is made, it sort of sticks, right? So when you try to put it inside the buckle, it's kind of tough to put it on. You have to like weave it through. So that's an issue you guys are gonna have to deal with in the future if you haven't dealt with already. Yeah, our production models, they have the silicon straps for the sapphire watches, which is obviously softer and doesn't discolor like rubber. So that's why we went with silicon. Honestly, I'm, I'm the guy that wants to talk shit and actually find something bad, but I really didn't, you know what I mean? Like I, I literally picked this watch apart and I'm going to Ian, I'm like, Ian, I'm like, can we find something that's bad about this watch? You know, and, and I honestly didn't. And if I did, I would tell you, you know what I mean? Uh, the price point. The regular ones are at two, Crystal's at five, and the Royal Blue uh, is at is around 10, uh, just under 10. 
you started talking about marketing and how you reduce your cost of marketing is you got this whole uh, you know mystery about you guys. You got to you got to get on the call. You got to you got to got to talk to Ryan or whoever else in your team. Where they're in the field in the comment section <laughs> talking to people. Hold on a second. You you want to tell me you guys sit there and deal with all the haters? Oh no! Oh no! Oh, I can't I can't wait I can't wait to see the comments on my channel. <laughs> Hanu loves it. He gets anyone it talking shit. I'm on it. Like you said, give me the link. I'll chat. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't have the time. I don't have the time today to do that because you know everybody has haters online. But let me talk. To, let me talk to you real quick because this is important. The concierge service. Well, what's half the world right now? They can't walk into a store. Depends what country you're in in the world. You can't simply walk into a watch store and buy a watch. Uh, the other thing is when you're buying online and when you're buying from a, a new brand or a brand that you haven't heard about before, it's sometimes it's a bit hard to spend five thousand, ten thousand dollars with a few clicks online, and you don't know where your money's going to. So we actually jump on the phone, whether it's myself, we've got three other mates in Australia that in customer service and they jump on the phones too. We answer everyone's questions. We run them through the process, talk them through the brand, the watches, and, and really we make mates with them at the end of the day because we're watch enthusiasts and collectors uh, at the start of the day as well. And we, we appreciate their collections. We get guys coming on the video call showing us their 20 watch collections just you know you can imagine you probably get this too they want to have a chat to you ask you a million questions and by the end of it uh whether they bought a watch or not as long as they gained a better appreciation for our, our brand then that's all we could ask for why we're getting a lot of respect from especially the watch purists out there is that we owned it and we were transparent from the start we're showing face we're not saying we're developed in some other country where we're not or made here where we're not we own the fact it, it is what it is you know and a lot of the customers we're getting it's it's either two spectrums one of them is your first buyer of your entry level luxury watch and they want an eventy and they're tossing up where they're spending the money on a you know whatever a rolex over an eventy and they're coming to us uh, and then the other end of it is you get your watch guys that have your Rolexes, APs, Patex, RMs, and they want to expand their collection. They're getting sick of getting treated like nothing from their ADs or not getting what they want. And they come to us and they're buying, especially, you know, our A11 Sapphire models or our, our titanium models, and they're expanding their collection. They're loving what we're doing. No one's really doing the design shape. We didn't set out to copy anyone. We're in our own little niche as I'd say 100% of the people that jump on the phone appreciate it after they're talking to us. If you think about it as a watch guy, and I'll ask my audience here, a lot of people call into my office, right? Like my all of my existing clients for years, they know they can pick up the phone, they can talk to a live client. If I want to FaceTime somebody, I can FaceTime somebody. In fact, we're going as far as now trying to implement a new software where the products can be viewed live. Now the concierge service, you know, I'm going to go back to high school and compare this to that one girl that always played hard to get, and the more she played played hard to get, the more, the more you wanted her. If you can't have something, right? Because guys have called me like, hey, can you get me an Aventi watch? I'm like, I don't f even know who these guys are. I'm like, I've never even sold one. I've never even seen one, right? And again, you guys cutting out all the middlemen. You're doing everything directly to the consumer. You're not spitting out thousands and thousands of these watches, which is why there's a wait list for them. Right now, the biggest scare that's going to happen Number one, and my business partner, Arthur, if you watch my videos, you know he tends to be a little shallow, right? Penarai handbag? Yeah, I have handbag. Penarai? Penarai handbag. Penarai only watches. Ah, you said Penarai handbag? No, no. I have ah, no, no, no. Penarai who blocked No, that's everything. it. No, I want Penarai handbag like you promised. You have? When I walked into his office and I was wearing both of these, he's like, wow, that looks cool. Who, 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 what is this? I'm like, it's an event you watch. He's like, who? Right? And I'm like... A person like him will never wear this because it's an event he watched. Now, this thing said Richard Mille on it or any other brand that's recognizable, of course, he'd be all over it, right? It's being heard of, and I think that once these make it out to the secondary market, meaning that the pre-owned market, right? This is where I feel like you're going to establish yourself because, again, unfortunately, today's day and age, if you're not on the internet everywhere, you're not anywhere, right? Frank Mueller did it to himself 10 years ago when he sent guys like us all these letters saying, stop selling my shit online and look where he is now. And we're talking about a great watchmaker at a time. Of course, he likes to party a little bit, but that's a side note. I cannot answer the question to any one of my viewers that says, okay, I'm gonna spend 10 grand on this. Uh, if I decide to get rid of it in a year and you know nine out of 10 people ask that, what is this going to be worth? There is no value on that because you guys aren't quite there yet. So your challenge is to keep yeah. the name alive. I've got a few things that I've, I've been planning for that. Um, one of it is uh, we're getting um, NFC chips put into the watches. 
And so what that means is that uh, not only it's about our, our authenticity of the watch, and that's the first problem that we're, we're already facing. I've already found uh, someone who's um, uh, copying us. Wait, that's great news. You know, what, you know, when you get copied, that's it, right? Haters is number one, and then, and then being copied is number two. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. And so that, that uh, NFC chip will uh, protect us, and we're, we're currently building the application to manage that. It actually enables us to create the customer program. So essentially, um, the watches that will be more desired or harder to get uh, you will have to show that you physically have the watch uh, on you. So if you want to get the skull version that we're bringing out, which is a world's first sapphire crystal skull inside um, the watch, it's a 3D skull inside at, uh, on top of a sapphire crystal to a beyond movement, which is in, also insane that we're working. That's got a forged carbon case with loom all through it, uh, which is also insane. And it's also going to be at a price that's going to be unbelievable. So if you want to get that, and you, you're going to have to have a Sapphire watch already on hand and you're going to have to scan it and show us in the concierge that you still have it on hand. Um, that's one way that we're, we're looking at rewarding our customers who hold on to the watch because it's not only about selling it and getting it. Okay, so get, guess what? I'm holding on to this one then <laughs> so I can get the other one. <laughs> well, that one doesn't have the chip in it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I can sort of anticipate what people will say. Having been in this business for almost 18 years now and heard it all, seen it all, from new products to older products. I've heard things, all those things said about Richard Mille, right? I've heard a lot of things said about other major manufacturers that are at the top of the list right now. What a lot of these people are going to say is, well, wait a minute, what did they really create? They copied this and they copied that and they copied this and they copied that. And I've always explained, I'm like, watchmaking is watchmaking, you know? When Breguet created a tourbillon 200 some years ago and everybody follows suit, there's nothing wrong with that. What you guys managed to do is you've taken an existing technology, right? So Sapphire Crystal, we're gonna give credit to Richard Meal. So we started with this, we started with Sapphire, that's what we're kind of known for. Actually, what's interesting about our titanium versions, just to say, is that we've got ceramic um, coating that's used in the automotive industry. That was, that was the feature of that, Cerakote. It's, it's highly scratch resistant and it gives us colors that you'll never see on watches. So we're actually mixing our own colors to, to mimic those of uh, supercars and putting them on watches. See, here, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but um, I'll get the light out. Uh, this one, uh, you can't really see, but this has pearl, it's a pearl white. So it, it, it has specs in it like a pearl white on a car. Um, this is a, like a yellow, you, you never see this kind of yellow on a watch. Like, we're looking at working with graphene, but we also know that we can, we can work with TPT as well. Um, we can combine graphene and TPT, and we're looking at fusing sapphire with TPT and graphene to create new materials. Uh, not only that, I'm looking at aerogels, which is the, the lightest solid in the world to, to work with. And so I'm, like, that's, my, that's kind of my job is to, you know, to look at what the trends are, see where we fit in, but also then push it a bit further. You know, a lot, a lot of people don't realize that what you're talking about is R&D. And if you look at some of the costs of R&D in the Swiss industry, they're in the millions, right? Uh, yeah. I, had a, I had a friend of mine, he, he knows who he is. I'm, he knows who he is. He, he watches my videos that wanted to start a U.S.-based uh, company. He spoke to a couple of uh, major manufacturers uh, out in Switzerland. Again, I won't mention any names. He literally gave me the breakdowns. He showed me the paperwork, how much it costs to just do research and development. And for a simple four, model, four models of a watch, uh, he got a quote of 875,000 Swiss for one guy, $1.1 million from another guy. But it sounds to me like you're taking a much more personal approach, which is cheaper, which then translate into the price of the watch. From a business perspective, uh, less exposure for yourself because you guys are investing a lot of money into this, but it's a lot less in comparison to the risk my buddy in the United States is going to take if he decides to go the route of manufacturing these watches the way he wants to manufacture by known watchmakers. Again, and it all translates to the fact that I can buy a sapphire crystal tourbillon in blue for $10,000. If your goal is to have that affordable watch to the end consumer that looks kick ass, that is seemingly popular because it's not very easy to get, and then you've achieved that goal. That, I feel that's the identity. Like, for me, it clicks, it, it resonates. It's, it's something where I'm, I'm calling up people, I'm making friends all around the world, and I'm saying, hey, let's do this. What are your problems? How can we work together? And what can we create from this? So the, you know, the, the graphene project that I'm working on right now, uh, I really want 
this, you know, I, I really want a graphene watch. I really want one. And so a lot of it's driven by passion of the team. So I'll ask on our group chat on WhatsApp, I'll say, Oh, you boys, what do you think of this? <laughs> like, and we'll go, oh yeah, all right, I want one. And, and we, we, we're honestly, we're just having, we're, we're enjoying ourselves. We're having fun. And that translates through the brand. And that's why we create that connection. So long term, um, yeah, I, th I think we have a huge future because we're just building friendships and we're creating products that we, we absolutely love. I've actually been talking to some Swiss partners right now. I've uh, got some interesting things coming up. But Of course, now that you guys have made it and you became popular, all of a sudden they want to talk to you, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, and, and now they want to make things cheaper all of a sudden. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, anyway. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> it, it's, we're, we're finding this equilibrium now between the Asian watch manufacturing industry and the Swiss. So before we were running around Switzerland, right? We were getting shut down. They were saying, okay, we'll give you a, a tourbillon movement, Swiss tourbillon movement for 5,000 plus US dollars. And that's before we even start making the watch, right? And now with the world crisis too, Swiss watch manufacturing went downhill, took a hit. Asian watch, watch manufacturing is on the rise in the last year and we're finding this middle ground. And now the Swiss coming to us and saying, all right, we're willing to negotiate. We're willing to play ball. They see the volume that we're doing. We're not coming in buying 50 limited edition pieces. You know, we want to do a larger order. We're limited in terms of production, but they see the trajectory that we're on. Once you create a product, a successful product that creates a huge buzz, uh, you know, all of a sudden now the big Swiss guys are saying, well, you know what, we understand your goal. We're going to try to fit your goals now in terms of cost of manufacturing, et cetera. Where, where do you see Aventi five years from now? If we were in this for the short game, I would be accepting every single luxury retail deal that comes in my email inbox. Oh, you know, there's, so there's minimum orders. There's guys in the Middle East in particular, America, UK, Singapore, Malaysia, Canada, Australia, all over the world. We've got that many offers that they want to stock a venti and be the first ones and the only ones in their country. And we've had investment deals, million dollar offers, and we've turned every single one down. So if we were in the short game, we'd take the quick buck and we'd go retail <laughs> and we'd cheapen our brand and, you know, it would all go to shit. But we're in this for the long game and we're controlling it he as best as can. He wouldn't have told you that three months ago. Bro. Yeah, no, three months ago, I would have been like, hey, man, we're getting these offers. This is amazing. But, you know, we're in this for the long game. And that's why we do the concierge as well, is to maintain that brand exclusivity. And Hanu is really big in particular on resale price. The only guys that are going to be selling this watch in the future in the gray market is someone like yourself or, you know, Chrono or all these pages, yeah. right? And, and it's going to be an interesting time when it does go to gray market because, we're even turning down celebrities trying to order the Royal Blue Sapphire and say, sorry, you can't. Oh, but hey, I'll pay five, $600 more to get it now. Well, sorry, uh, we'll secure your allocation for November slash December. Yeah. And they, they want it more, as you said. And um, yeah, so it's going to be an interesting time when the gray market does come and people do get their watches delivered. Here's your next step. You got to make it into a rap song, number one, right? <laughs> oh, oh, actually. <laughs> we're on well, track. Well, Ryan's actually on that right now. Oh, okay. So we got so, some so. exciting, we've had, crazy We've news. had all yeah. the rappers and music producers, big time guys, reach out to us, especially in the Sapphire range. Um, yeah, so yeah. expect to see it in some upcoming music videos, yeah. I, li I like what you said. The minute the gray market appears is the minute you get an authorized dealer. Because I don't care which authorized dealer you pick in the world, I have relationships with many of them. I'm gonna pick up the phone and say, oh, your cost is 40 off, I'll buy 10 pieces at 25 off. My advice to you is not to have dealers. Because the minute you start to have dealers, there's not a single dealer out there, no matter how big or small, that won't sell out for a big check. And believe me when I tell you, because I've done this over and over for many, many years. So if you continue holding on to the distribution yourself, and I would say if you do want to show up in a retail space, then I would probably pick two to three prominent locations in the world and control that. Again, without trying to increase your cost, because the minute you do that, you do increase your, you know, your back office cost tremendously, so it has to sort of pay for itself. But I would not go to an AD. Because they will sell you out in a heartbeat, I'm telling you honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you ever see yourself getting out to outside of that price range and getting more and more expensive as the time goes no, by, no, or are you going to control that? Yeah. Well, I'm working on something now. I'm going to show you. Um, should I show you? I, I, mean, I, sh I mean, if people are watching this long, I always do this on the Insta Live. I wait to like 50 minute mark, and then I'm like, hey guys, have a look at this. 
This is something that we're working on at the moment. It's a rainbow of anti. That is invisibly set. It's incredibly difficult to invisible set, especially that type of setting on you know this type of case. I'm, I'm very familiar how much it costs and what it costs to get the stones. I'm, I'm extremely familiar how much that stuff costs. And guys, let me tell you something. It is very expensive. First, to find a collection of stones to match, and then B, have somebody hand set that invisible set by cutting every single stone, make sure they're all fit together. Uh, if you guys, a lot of times, uh, you you know, talk about the Jacob Rainbow Turbions. Uh, well, why are they so much money? And I'm like, you have no idea what it costs to create one of those things. Exactly. With the brand, my vision for the brand is is not necessarily about, you know, hey, we're, we're selling cheap, cool stuff, which is kind of what we're doing. But I want to kind of challenge the way that other businesses operate and say, hey, we're offering this for a fraction of the price, but it is of that you know, quality of that value that you would get if you spent 400K. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because I think it's time to sort of set the record straight. And when we utilize the word cheap and a lot of the viewers are gonna come and say cheap this and cheap that, it's not cheap. It's really taking your operation and getting it to a point where you able not to mark up your product X, Y, Z because you don't have to cover certain costs. You got manufacturers out there that are doing anywhere from six times to 12 times. Richard Mille is 12 times. He's, he's the highest one, right? And again, it's a 12 time market from the cost of manufacturing into which marketing is factored, boutiques, everything is factored into it, granted. So what we started this conversation with is, hey, let's trim down the fat. So if, if we know that it's gonna cost you $100,000 to produce that rainbow aventi, let's say. And your costs are so minimal in regards to your back office costs, marketing costs, and things of that nature. You don't have to sell that watch for 400,000. You can sell it for $130,000 and still probably make the same amount of profit as the other major boys. And that's really what I'm talking about when we say cheap. So to, I guess you answered my question. You don't feel that you need to limit yourself to 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 dollars. You can just as successfully create $100,000 watches, but in comparison, they're going to be a fraction yeah. of a cost. Exactly. Yeah. So that that's you know that was one of the exciting ones that we're we're chipping away at at, at the moment. But do you know? I mean, it is so hard to find someone to uh, hand you know to set it. Call me. I I know a few guys. <laughs> I get <awesome. laughs> We'll chat. We'll chat <laughs> <up. Nightmare. laughs> That was a really cool picture. I appreciate you sharing with me, guys. I'm going to wrap this up. This is running long already as is. I'm sure viewers are going to stick around. Love the fact that you guys are able to show yourselves to the public and. The public, I'm sure, realizes that this is not the big badass manufacturers. These are regular young guys that are excited about a product that they made. They are successful right now. Try to go on their website and order a watch, see how long it's going to take you to get one. And the best part about it is then you guys log on to their website and you go to the concierge service, you may end up talking to either one of these two gentlemen because there's no fluff in that company. You know, it's a few guys that have gotten together, put together something something that works. I appreciate you sending these to me. I was very pleasantly surprised when I got an answer from Ryan saying, sure, I I'll send, you, I'll send you these watches. Anybody outside of the Swiss industry today is still an underdog. And at the end of the day, I tell my clients all the same thing. You buy what you like first and foremost. Uh, I can only imagine with the creativity that you guys have, what else you're going to come up with in the future. And honestly, I can't wait. I certainly would love to see that rainbow thing whenever it comes out. Guys, I don't have to advertise them. Just Google of empty watches. They'll come up. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to show a little more details on these watches. And I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much, Robin. Appreciate it, man. Cheers. Yeah. I, I Right. Yeah. Well, guys, I appreciate you joining me. You can tell how excited they are about their product. And this isn't some kind of a marketing stunt. Like I said, uh, these watches are going to go back in the box. I have to ship them back. I don't get to keep any one of them. Well, maybe they'll send me one later, Ryan, maybe, if you're watching this. But uh, long story short, no, I did not get paid to do this, nor did am I going to keep any of these watches. This was simply based on the fact that a lot of you guys asked me about this watches. I became curious after you did. I did a little bit of reading. I sent him an email and lo and behold, these watches ended up on my desk. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Other than that, guys, you know what to do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. And I'll see you guys next week for more watch reviews and other videos.